Hi, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Yarn and Pajamas. Today is crochet podcast number 65. So how have you guys been doing? Today is Saturday and I've had a chill Saturday. It has been so nice. I have um, laid around and crocheted and watched TV all day. I've not done anything like strenuous. It's been exciting. It's been so good. I slept as late as my bladder would let me sleep which was about nine o'clock. So I slept in today and I really enjoyed it. So I wanna show you guys what I've been working on all week. So the first thing is I wanna talk about um, the mushroom satchel that I've been working on. Well, I figured out, yeah, I'm not a sewer. Not yet anyways, I'm gonna keep practicing, but I am not able at this point in time to, crow, uh, to sew a liner for a circular bag. So what I'm gonna do is instead, I'm just gonna crochet a smaller like stem version of the bag and put on the inside and hope that it just helps keep things in there a little better. So that's what I started on. I've got the bottom. I need to figure out, you know, how many rounds I actually need to do in order for it to fit on the inside. So to be sort of like what I done with the mushroom cap, I just made like a smaller version of the cap to help it stand up better. I also need to make another strap because I did try sewing the ribbon on, which looks super cute, only my sewing skills were not great. Um, it's really hard to sew like blindly, I guess, would be the word for it. And that's pretty much what I was doing because I had the crochet on the top and the strip was down on the bottom. And it was just really hard to see because the, the ribbon was just a little bit smaller than the crochet. It was just hard for me to see. Um, I really did not enjoy it, just to be honest with you. So, but I am going to keep practicing my sewing because I do want to be able to make my dog Trixie, who's a Chihuahua, some blankets for her to lay on. She likes to lay in a specific spot in the living room. So we always put down a blanket, but in the summertime, um, the little fuzzy blankets is what we have a whole lot of. Um, it's just way too hot for her because she just overheats. I mean, she has so much hair. Um, she just overheats and she doesn't like them. Now I do have like a, like a quilted blanket that, um, I bought at a thrift store, I think for like five bucks. She really likes that one in the summertime. It's a little bit cooler. And then there's a, it's Christmas themed, but, um, oops, sorry, it's Christmas themed. And, um, I had made it a long time ago and it was like tacked kit together and the the trim on it is like crazy because I didn't know how to do um, a binding for a blanket but I'm gonna learn all of that stuff in order to make her a couple like little like you know crib size baby blanket type things for her to have to lay on you know during the summer months when she gets a little bit hot so my sewing journey is not over yet it will continue but right now it's on hold but that's what I've been working on as far as the mushroom satchel. I've not really got anything else done on it. Um, yeah. So I thought like, what am I going to work on? I've been working on this mushroom satchel for a couple weeks now. I want something new, something fresh to work on. So I was like, got on YouTube and was looking around and I seen that Lisa at Coco's Crochet um, got her first colors for her 2023 cow, C-A-L, crochet along. Yeah, it sounds like I'm saying cow, like the moo moo cow, <laughs> but anywho, you guys know what I'm talking about now when I say cow, and it sounds like I'm saying cow as the animal, but it's not. So, she is hosting a crochet along for 2023, and I've been super excited about joining in. So, I'm going to leave a link to her channel down below, and I'm also going to leave a link to her cow's playlist down below so you guys can go check it out if you haven't but it looks to be like super fun and she's got a super you know cool idea going on and I'm really really pumped for it so I do have my first part of the cow finished and I will show you guys that let me get it to where it's going 
the right direction. Here it is. There we go. So this is my corner to corner, guys. That's right. I have started the corner to corner crochet. It has been a goal for a couple years now, and here I have it. So Lisa's cow consists of She's um, got this beautiful calendar from her hometown in Sydney, Australia. And like the, the first picture from January is absolutely gorgeous. But she picks out some colors that she sees in um, this calendar. She puts them in a little box and she draws out some colors. So she draws out three colors and then she has a wild card, which is the fourth color. So every two weeks, she's going to go through the calendar. So the goal is by July, we have a complete year's worth done in just six months. And then we'll have like a Christmas in July, you know, type thing. So now Lisa is using um, all like um, things that, yarns that she had used to make people stuff with. I'm just pulling from my stash. Every yarn I use in this will be a stash um, yarn. So this is a stash busting project for me. You guys hear that train? So the colors I used were this blue is a line bringing basic stitch and the color is salt water this yellow has made an appearance a couple times with me here lately it's from um crafter secret from hobby lobby and it is yellow the white is uh from joann's it's um what's hers called big twist in white and then this purple here is a red heart super saver in deep orchid. I did crochet all of my ends in except for the the purple and I'll tell you why and this is not going to be a popular opinion for crochet but I do not my ends together in blankets. I am just super afraid that it's going to come undone and like the blanket is just going to unravel. So I always knot my ends together in blankets. I don't think you can really feel like if you squeeze down real hard like I can feel the knot there the yellow one I can feel the knot but nobody's really gonna know right so the reason I didn't do this one yet is because this little booger will be um, attaching itself to another color and then I will knot this color I'll weave it up and knot it in with this one but I thought I'll just weave my ends in as I go along and then when I'm done, I'm just done, you know? So I did have some help on learning how to do this because I have never done corner to corner before. So Terry over at Yarn Joy Podcast, she may not know it, but she taught me how to um, crochet the corner to corner stitch because I went and watched her tutorial and I will leave a link to Terry's channel down below and her left-handed and right-handed version of how to do the corner to corner stitch in case there's anybody else out there who's like me and was super scared to do it because I thought, oh, that's gonna be complicated. Well, the increasing part is not, guys. It is super easy to do, and it's a lot of fun. So, I did enjoy myself greatly, and even um, switching colors wasn't hard um, to do. I just done it like I do any other color switch in crochet, and it's, you know, worked out fine. See? So, yeah. So, I hope that you guys will join Lisa along in her... Um, cow for 2023 so now she's doing a stitch sampler so she's doing something completely different than me see that's the beauty of this one you're not locked into like one thing it's like you get to even interpret the colors like you don't have to use a bright yellow you can use a pale yellow or you can use an orangey yellow or you know a light purple or a light blue I mean or a creamy white I mean it doesn't have to be like these colors. These were just colors from my stash. Actually, the first, um, you know, three of these colors that I come across is I just picked and was like, okay, I'm using those three colors and well, four colors because I got the wild card. So I hope you guys will join along with Lisa and um, 
join in on her cow. She um, does say in her um, video that you can send her pictures if you want her to um, showcase your um, um, blanket as we go along. And she also said that she um, has a, a, a hashtag over on um, Instagram. So if I can figure it out, I'm going to link her Instagram down below and also put that hashtag down there um, so that you can um, hashtag it over there and then like the world can say it, you know. So I already did um, because, you know, I was so excited <laughs> that I learned how to do it. I already put my little eight rows on there. So I'm super excited every two weeks. She's going to be releasing some more colors, and I am going to be super excited about adding some more colors into my blanket. So, yeah. So, please go check out Lisa, and please join in on her cow. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so the next thing that I have to show you is another works in progress. And because I was having, this, oh, I'm using a six millimeter hook on this too. I think, what's that, a J? I think so. It's the brown the brown clover hook is the one I'm using. So because I was having a lot of fun working on that one, I decided to start another one. So I have this yarn here and I've had it for quite some time. And it is Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton and it's called Sprinkles on Top. It's this um, pretty, pretty like rainbowy color. And um, these um, Sugar Wheel Cottons are five ounces. It says it's 100% cotton. Um, it is a light three is what it says. Oh, I did not know that. I just assumed it was a four weight. I don't know why. But yeah, it's a light three. So it says to use a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook or four millimeter knitting needles. And I really think that I'm using an H hook with this, so I'm not using the right recommended hook. Let's see, where can I put that? But anywho, I started, are we? Yep. I started another corner to corner crochet. So I always thought, that's what I always intended for this um, sugar wheel cotton. I have like three of them, I think. So I'll probably have to get more, but I always envisioned a beautiful corner to corner blanket out of it. And that's why I bought it for, and I was just always too chicken to learn how to do it. But I started it and don't it look just so squishy and soft. I'm super, super excited about this. And now I've done all of this in about 30 minutes. That might not be a lot, but to me it is. I watched an, and I was watching TV too. Watched an episode of Ghosts. How, do you guys watch that show? It is super hilarious. I love it. But I done this and it was kind of like I didn't even want to stop. But I'm like, hey, I got to go hang out with my friends and show them this cool new thing that I learned. So I will be working on this some more tonight. So I'm sure that you guys will be seeing it later. But like I said, I'm using a five millimeter hook. I think it's the blue the blue clover hook. So I think that is five millimeter. Oh, let's go. So H hook. So, but I think it's working up nicely with the H hook. I did start it with the J hook, but it was like too holy. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want. So I'm super excited. And I think I'm going to keep this blanket for myself when I make it because it is gorgeous already. Okay. So that's what I've been working on. Um, I'm really excited about, as you can tell, Lisa's cow that's going on. Um, I'm super excited about learning this corner to corner crochet. Now I did only watch Terry's video enough to get how to do the, the increase. Like I did not go on to the decrease. I will do that at a later time. Okay, I'm gonna take me a sip of water real fast. I want to show you guys these straws. I wonder, can you see them? It's like glittering. These are reusable straws. I found these at the dollar store in the party section. It's like a pack of six. That's so cool. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is I have some show and tell. So I'm going to 
scooch over so that I have plenty of room to put their pictures in. And the first one is from Donna and it is um, two stockings that she made for Christmas. Look how gorgeous those stockings are. I just absolutely love them. Oh, the snowman theme is just gorgeous. I love it. They look to be knitted and with some crochet um, parts on them as well. So that's pretty cool. So thank you, Donna, for sharing those with me and sharing them with everybody else. They're absolutely gorgeous and I absolutely love them. So Mary Margaret has been busy per usual. She's always, always got some of the coolest stuff to show us. So the first thing she made was this pot holder by Sarah Satch and it's the triple thick pot holder. It's super cute. I'm telling you guys, these pot holders are gold right here. These are good gifts to give away. They're good things to make and have at your house. I just love these pot holders and can't get enough of them. She's also working on two different gnomes by Muffacorn Gnomes on Etsy. Muffacorn has some very cute gnomes, like especially like a like food themed, like I want to say like there, she's got like a hot chocolate one and like a pumpkin pie one. Like it's such decadent gnomes. I haven't made one of her gnomes yet, but I really, really want to. She has these two hats finished. There's no patterns. She just whipped these up. And I did ask her. I wondered because, you know, she makes a lot of hats. And I wondered if she donated her hats or if she just made them for family and friends. And she said that that's what she does. She just gives them out to her family and friends. And I think that is such a nice thing to do because who doesn't love their head to be warm? And so who's not gonna love a nice, cozy, warm hat? I know I love the hats that Linda sent me. I wear both of them all of the time. Um, I actually just had one on just a few minutes ago when I took the dogs out, the one with the little poofy thing on top. And she also made um, this lap blanket. It's a scrap blanket. Um, I think it's pretty neat how like she's got like the big triangle and then she's got like the squares and the little squares. That is very inventive. And I always love the way that Mary Margaret puts her colors together. She does such a wonderful job on that. I just really love that. So thank you, Mary Margaret. And thank you, Donna, for sharing your makes with us. Um, if anybody ever wants to share what they've been working on with me, you can email me and send me pictures. Um, please let me know if it's okay to share it on the podcast because I just really think that everybody likes seeing like all of these projects that other people are working on because, you know, it inspires us to do different things and to, you know, branch out and stuff. So I really, really really like that. So, thank you, Donna and Mary Margaret. Okay, um, the next thing I want to talk about is, like, upcoming type stuff, and I was just tagged in a, um, um, hash, it's hashtag Emma Gurumi book tag by Crystal at Chronically Crocheting. So, I'm super excited to do that tag. Um, my books are over behind you guys. So, I'm going to, you know, pull out all my books and stuff. And hopefully, I'll be able to get that, you know, done um, fairly soon. Because I'm super excited about it. It just seems like a lot of fun. Um, the next thing, that's all I got in upcoming. But the next thing is I have some, like, Happy Mail. So, I've gotten some, um cards for Christmas. Um, I should have showed them last week, but I forgot them downstairs. But one of the cards is a Halloween card. Remember I told you guys that Neva sent me um, the cutest ever Halloween card and I couldn't find it? Well, I found it. I had put it up in my box of cards, you know, the cards that people send me, I keep in a box. And I was putting my Christmas cards up and I seen Neva's was laying right on top. But look at it. It's so cute. It says, wishing you a fantastic Halloween, your friend Neva. And it's got this a puffy gnome sticker on the inside. So, thank you, Neva. Sorry it took me so long to show it off. But I was so happy when I found it. 
Okay, so here is a card. Look at it. Got this one is from Joyce. And it says, um, Merry Christmas, you know, wishing you and your family blessings in 2023. But on the back, it says, have yourself a brawly Christmas. So, um, this is an Irish or a Scottish sheep. Yes. And he's wishing me a Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Joyce, for that card. I really, really enjoy that. <clears throat> This one's from Meg. Oh, look. It is a mommy and a daddy cardinal. I seen the coolest thing on Facebook. Was it Facebook or TikTok? I can't remember. Um, but it was like in Pennsylvania. They seen like a rare. It was like a half mom, half dad cardinal. Like half of it was the color of the dad and half of it was the color of the mom. I was like, that is weird. And it has a name, like when it happens in nature, but but cardinals are one of my favorite birds. I love them. Every time I see one, I think it's my mommy, mom, and daddy, paw. So it says, May the beauty of nature fill your heart with peace and joy throughout the year. And it's from Meg. Meg has a beautiful handwriting. Very beautiful. That's like handwriting that you strive to have. And it's that cursive, cursive handwriting. Ooh, so nice. Okay. And then this one is from my friend Angelia over at Crocheting House Mouse. And it says, let it snow. And we got some snowmen and some different varieties there. That one's melted. On the inside, it says, sending you and your family, sending you a flurry of winter wishes. And there is this cute little uh, ornament attached to it. And I'm going to take that ornament out and put it with my Christmas ornament. So thank you very much, Angelia. I really, really like that. Appreciate it. And then the last card is from Lisa at Coco's Crochet. And let me, it's got some stickers in it or foamy bits. Yeah, they're stickers. Look at Santa. See down there, Santa, you know, gets to put on his um, shorts and short sleeves because by the time he gets or whenever he gets, hits Australia, it's warm. So he's camping out with some critters here. It says Merry Christmas. It says, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And then on the inside, I have these cool foamy stickers. I've got a Christmas tree. I've got a kangaroo holding a gift. Oops. I've got Santa and his sack. <laughs> I've got a koala in a stocking. That's probably my favorite one. We've got a sugar plum fairy. And then we have a little elf holding a gift. So thank you very much, Lisa and Coco. Woof, woof, Coco. Um, I really appreciated this. It was so much fun getting. Let me pick up the And it's super cool. I hope mine finally made its way to you, Lisa. And then the last bit of Happy Meal I got, I got from my friend Sheila. She... Um, a couple episodes back, I showed you guys, um, some towel toppers that she had made and she had made them on these cute little towels that, um, were like retro Christmas ornaments. Let me cut this open here. And, um, she was so kind to send me two of the towels. I unrolled one here for you. And here it is. Look at it. Isn't that not just so cute? So I get to make me some towel toppers onto these towels and I have two of them. So I get to make four of them. Yes, I was so excited to try to find these and I couldn't find them at my dollar store. My dollar store didn't have them or they had sold out of them. But I just love the retro, like, look of this one. And she was so kind to go out and get me some. 
and I really appreciate it, Sheila. Thank you for thinking of me and sending me this gift, and I cannot wait to put some tail toppers on them, so thank you so much. So that is all of the Happy Meal that I've gotten. Okay, guys, I think that the next thing that we can do is go ahead and pick a winner for um, the stitch marker sets I have here. So I'm going, I had to borrow my mom's iPad because, you know, my um, old iPhone that I used to use for recording the screen for the raffles, the home key quit working. So... I'm going to have to get me, I don't like using my computer because it takes up the whole screen. Whereas this, I can just put it right here. So, and I gave my iPad to my nephew. So, I think I'm just going to have to break down and purchase me an iPad so that I'll have it for things like this and be able to do other things with it. I like to read on like, you know, Nooks and um, Kindle readers. So it'll probably come in handy for that too. So yeah, I'm gonna have to break down. But thank you to my mom for letting me um, borrow her thing here. So let's start the recording now. Okie dokie, let's see. Oh, yeah, here's me trying to um, figure out how to record the screen. Okay. So, let's see. So, we need YouTube comment picker. Yes. She says that she needs a new um, iPad as well because this one um, is so old. So, I don't have noticed it was, you know, pretty slow on, like, when I was, like, trying to go get the URL of my video. And you see here, it's taking forever for it to pop up. But that's okay, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to insert it here if it hadn't been for her letting me borrow. Okay, so I think I pretty much copied the URL. So we'll filter duplicates. We'll include replies. We don't have a specific text. Uh, we will remove the winner from the list after the draw because we're going to draw two winners. And three plus three equals six. Get YouTube comment. So we have 59 comments. Awesome, awesome sauce. So let's pick our first winner. So you guys ready? Start. Did it start? Oh, there we go. Deb Hanslick is our first winner. She says, happy anniversary. Thank you for all you share. Happy New Year. So I have some stitch markers here, Deb, for you. So all I need you to do, Deb, is to um, email me at my address. It'll be listed down below. Just send me an email and I can get these out in the mail to you. Okay, so Deb Hanslick is our first winner and it says pick another one. So we're going to pick us another winner. Okay, guys, here we go. Rosa Parada, did I say your name right? She says, happy Potiversary, Rebecca. I just love watching your channel and seeing all your beautiful makes. Yay, Rosa. So you win the second set of stitch markers. So just email me down below, Rosa Parada. Did I say your name right? Just email me down below and I will get those out in the mail to you. So congratulations, Deb and Rosa. That was um, so much fun. Um, thank you all for participating in um, um, this drawing with me. It was a lot of fun to be able to make you guys these um, stitch markers. And I just wanted to say 
you know, thank you guys for um, hanging out with me, you know, these past couple years. You guys are amazing. Um, you never um, get mad at me when I get behind on my comments or when I skip a week for my podcast. You um, truly are very supportive of me, and I very much appreciate that. Um, so, thank you guys. All right. Um, that's all I have this week. Um, it's been a fun week. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying um, the new year in 2023 so far. Um, it's been, you know, pretty uneventful for me. I did go to the dentist the other day, and sadly, I have a cracked tooth and must get a crown. So, <sighs> I hate that. Um, but, you know, I just, I don't have good genetics when it comes to teeth, so... You know, there's that. It could be worse, I guess. But, well, you know, I started 2023 out spending all of my HSA money that I got from my employer. But it's all good. Okay, so I hope you guys are having a safe and warm and happy new year. Um, I'm super excited about seeing all of your guys' makes this year, seeing what we all get into crochet-wise and life-wise. It's just going to be so much fun. So um, remember to head over and check out Lisa and Coco over at their channel. You know, Coco's her dog, but... Um, she is just, she's amazing. She's so cute and cuddly, and I just want to cuddle her so bad. But go over and check them out and see what they're doing with this cow, because I really do think that you guys will have fun joining in. And I'm going to go get this edited and get it posted up for you guys and get on doing that um, tag that Crystal tagged me in. So I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>